In 350 BC, the famous Greek philosopher Aristotle said that our Earth is a stationary object in the solar system and that all the planets, including the Sun, revolve around the Earth. However, in 1543, when Nicholas Copernicus published his detailed theory of the universe, many people finally got confirmation about what the real planetary motion is and how things work in the solar system. While studying this, a question arose in our minds. Can humans actually transport the sun with them as an object, or at least move it to another place? And the things we got to know will blow your mind. So, hello guys, you are watching Brain Bargain, and let's start another new episode. To move the sun, it is first necessary to understand why there is a need to move the sun. Well, there are two major reasons. The first reason is that when we need to relocate at an interstellar level, we will be able to transport our primary energy source, the sun, with us. The second reason, which is directly resonant with the red giant phase, is that when our sun is in the red giant phase, it will keep expanding and its Goldilocks zone will extend as well, causing Earth to eventually move out of the sun's habitable zone. In such a situation, if we can move the sun away from us while keeping Earth stationary, we can extend the habitability of our planet by at least 10 to 20 million years. Moreover, by moving the sun from one place to another, we might discover a better way to harness its energy, fulfilling our extensive energy needs. Now, all these things are achieved through stellar engines. A stellar engine is a type of cosmic megastructure that can either harness the sun's energy or use the sun's energy to provide thrust to it, enabling us to move the sun or even the entire solar system to another place if needed or control their motion. By 2024, several models of stellar engines have been proposed, but is it possible? Well, friends, theoretically, yes. But is it practically possible? Let's discuss this step by step. The first concept of a thrusting stellar engine in human history was given by one of the craziest astronomers in history, Fritz Zwicky. Now, for those who don't know why he was so great, let me tell you that the dark matter, which makes you so curious today, and neutron stars, which help us technologically, were first proposed by him. Similarly, the idea of humanity's first stellar engine was also given by him, which was kind of different from the ideas proposed later. He proposed that we would launch a large particle accelerator into space that would shoot bunches of particles at the sun at near light speed. Now, since these particles traveling at near light speed would have no shortage of kinetic energy, as soon as they impact the sun's surface, they would initiate high energy fusion reactions that would produce such fast and energetic solar jets that they would push the sun from its current position. In this way, our sun would use its own matter as propellant after ignition impact and move in the opposite direction of the direction in which we shoot the particles, because as Newton's second law suggests, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. However, Zwicky was never taken astronomically seriously because he never went into the mathematics of his ideas. He would just propose ideas and move on. But we are no less and took on the responsibility of this math and thought let's calculate it ourselves and see how much energy we would need. So, let's do the most basic calculation. Einstein gave the formula E equals mc square. This means to calculate the required energy, we need to multiply the mass of the particles by the square of the speed of light. So, for instance, if we take a proton as a particle, its mass is 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 27 kilograms. But we can't even use the value of a normal proton here because, according to the Lorentz factor, the mass of a particle also increases with relativistic mass as its speed approaches that of light. Now, if we assume the speed of the particle to be 99.99% of the speed of light, its Lorentz factor comes out to be 7.71. In the relativity equation, we need to use the effective mass instead of the original mass of the proton, which would be the Lorentz factor multiplied by the rest mass of the proton. When we multiply both, we get a value of 1.18 into 10 to the power minus 25 kilograms. When we multiply this by c square, we get the value of 3.54 into 10 to the power minus 9 joules. This much energy would be required to accelerate just one proton, which isn't much in itself, but if you consider that we need to move a massive celestial object like the sun, we would need a continuous stream of energized particles. Now, even in a basketball, there are approximately 1.05 into 10 to the power 30 protons, and since we would need more protons than this, this small energy requirement could reach trillions of joules on a massive scale, 
even for a single push which is currently beyond our capacity until we learn to harness the energy of celestial objects. About 26 years after Fritz, Russian physicist Leonid Shkadov published a paper in 1987 titled Possibility of Controlling Solar System Motion in the Galaxy. In this, he proposed a mirrored structure that would work as a thruster by reflecting sunlight back towards the sun. Shkadov analyzed that photons released by the sun give it an almost imperceptible push in the opposite direction of the light emission. However, since these photons are emitted from all sides of the sun, the push momentum from opposing rays cancels out, keeping the sun stationary. This is where Shkadov came in and suggested that if we could focus all of the sun's rays in only one direction, the light momentum, which currently keeps the sun in one place, would start pushing it in the opposite direction. So how would this work? Shkadov proposed setting up a concave mirror, the size of a planet's orbit on one side of the sun, made of ultra-thin film. This megastructure would be installed at a distance where it would be tightly locked by the sun's gravitational pull but not pulled in too close. Then, sunlight would do the rest of the work. As soon as sunlight or photons hit these films installed far from the sun, they would immediately reflect back towards the sun, increasing the radiation pressure on the side of the sun where the mirrors are installed. Now, suppose this hemispherical mirror is installed on the left side of the sun. The solar rays emitted from the right side of the sun would push it to the right. At the same time, when the reflected sunlight from the mirrors hits the left side of the sun again, due to the conservation of momentum, it would provide additional net thrust to move it to the right. Eventually, as sunlight is deflected in one direction from both faces, the sun will begin to move forward, and due to its gravitational pull, it will take the entire solar system along with it. The question arises, what is the benefit of this? The benefit is that when our sun starts showing signs of a red giant phase in about 1 billion years, we can move our sun towards another star that can become our next parent star. During this movement, we will eventually get close enough to the new star that its gravity will overtake the sun's gravity and pull Earth towards it. If we get pulled into the habitable zone of this new star, then even without a single second without a parent star, making Earth nearly deathless. However, while this model is entirely possible, sourcing the materials might be a bit challenging. But the problem is that its thrust won't be as powerful as many of you might be imagining right now. According to calculations, about 1 million years after the mirror is installed, the sun's movement speed will reach 20 meters per second. In these 1 million years, our sun will only displace by 0.03 light years from its position, which is equivalent to about 18,997 astronomical units. And this distance is huge, but this speed is not a stationary value because, over time, the sun's traveling speed will continue to accelerate as the radiation pressure on it increases. According to this calculation, this speed of 20 meters per second will reach 20 kilometers per second in about 1 billion years, and we would have traveled 3,400 light years across the cosmos, more than a third of the width of the Milky Way. But the question remains the same. Can we even survive for 1 billion years? Humanity's behavior doesn't seem promising for this scenario. Who knows, maybe at that time, some alien species might be roaming the cosmos with their star and solar system, or perhaps we would be the first in the universe to do so. Additionally, the Dyson Sphere is also a very prominent megastructure for harnessing a star's energy. But according to you, which of these two structures seems more realistic, and which has higher chances of being built in real life? Do let us know in the comments section below. By the way, friends, what do you think? Should we even move our sun? Or is it a ridiculous idea? Be sure to write your opinion in the comment section below. If you liked the video, make sure to like it and share it with your friends.